another day at the workshop and it looks well it's not really like the engine is in place no more engine crane which is nice because a it gives you a better idea of how things are going to look and b it makes it a damn sight easier for me to work on but yeah it's in place but about the crane thanks to this hydraulic lift thing it's basically a hydraulic lifting table goes down flat you just pump it up and yeah i was thinking about this a few weeks ago i was like you know what would be good on these mr2 swaps because we normally do it on like a table you know you put the car on the ramp and you put the engine on the table and you drop the car down onto the table and engine goes in super easy and the same for removing them and i thought well that's okay when the lift's free but this car's not on the lift so i was thinking you know what would be good if you had a table that lifted itself and i didn't really know if that existed but it made sense that it did i was sure i'd seen one so I had a look around and I did. Um, most of them were bloody expensive. This wasn't cheap, but this is like a 500 kilo rated one. And it was by far the cheapest I found. It was like 300 and 350 odd quid, 360, I can't remember. It was a lot of money, but still less than most. Most of 500 kilo ones big brand ones were like thousand quid plus which no can't justify that but i thought between my two current um mr2s mrs whatever with engine conversions plus other ones i'll probably be doing plus anything thomas needs to do which is his own ones and customer ones and whatever i thought this thing's worth it and well it is as you can see it's kind of, it's not paid for itself already, but it's brilliant having this. All I had to do, I mean, I must admit the the quality of it wasn't great. I had to modify the release lever a bit to make it work correctly. Um, I had to, well, that was the only problem problem. The only other thing I had to do was purely because of how I wanted to use it. I wanted to slide it in from the front of the car because obviously it's got a big overhang with the gearbox at the back so if i slid it in the other way you wouldn't be able to get to the pump handle so i wanted it to come in from that way and to do that i needed the 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 pushing handle which obviously normally vertical when it's a a trolley like that to actually lie flat so but that was relatively simple i just unbolted it and turned it all around and put it all back together so now I can slide it in flat. I think I can see it. Yeah, this is what I mean. The handle is upside down. So although it does go vertical, that's its down position where naturally it's vertical or flat over that to, uh, you know, not take up much room when you're not using it. But I wanted it the other way round, which would allow me to sit the engine on it and get it in place and the reason i'm doing this is purely so i can mock up the hot side the exhaust side best i can which to be honest i mostly can for the moment i'm just spot welding everything in place so i can mock it all up and then uh i'll do the final welding when the thing's all complete because it's mad just to completely weld something until it's all mocked up because what if you have to change things? Well, it ain't gonna work very well. So far, I've spot welded the two and a quarter inch V-bands onto the exhaust manifolds and the turbos are four inch V-bands on the outlets. And obviously we've got the Two and a half feet bands there. So now, via the wonders of Schedule 10 stainless and other shit, I'm going to see what I can mock up next. 
Um, I think first job is to put the turbos back in a position and work out the rest from there. I think that is the place for the turbos. Inlets, turbine inlets are, you know, as close as you can realistically get. That's plenty of height for the oil drains to get back to the sump without a problem. It's enough room from the compressor outlets and the compressor housing to not hit the exhaust. On the back, it would be like that and then there'll probably be sort of down a 90 degree down and then a 90 degree out so it's like a triple center exit you know like a ferrari f40 but yeah now i just need to work out two pipes one from each side and a link pipe and so on and uh go from there looking good so far though Very happy with uh, how it's looking. Remember I said in the last video about V-bands being a pain in the ass because there's no particular overall dimensions, OD, compared to ID. All you get is, you know, something's a, a two and a half inch ID V-band, but that's it. The OD could be all sorts, you know, and the OD is the important bit because it's what goes around the clamp. So if you're trying to fit it to, especially if you've got, you only need half of it because you're fitting it to a, you know, turbine outlet, turbine inlet, whatever, you might find the V-band you've got doesn't fit. But anyway, I talked about that in the last video. One thing I didn't talk about was it's not even universal on the male and female ones exactly how thick this lip is. I had three different, um, well, one, two, four different two and a half inch V-bands. One from one company, two from another company, one from another company. The two from one company, well, basically all three different companies had different thickness of that lip. Um, and only one of them out the four fitted the turbine inlet flange because that's V-band, that's V-band female. I needed these male ones. One was miles too thick, one fitted perfectly, and two, these two, were, they were half a mil out. Basically, the one it fitted was one and a half mil thick. These were two mil thick. But thank God, Thomas has got a leave. So, well, I share his workshop. So, thankfully, he taught me how to use leaves, because I, well, we weren't allowed to touch them at school. We did have them at school, but they didn't let us touch them. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just put it in the, put these two in the leaf and took half a mil off that. This one, I had to double check with the one it fitted that this wasn't the, uh, the one it fitted already because I'd machined it so nicely, I couldn't even tell. That one looks a bit shit in comparison. <laughs> I kind of got my practice on that one because I've not used this leaf for months. And um, yeah, this one's mint. So now I've gone and tried. They both fit straight into the turbine housing. So let me show you. Do, 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 do. It's Thomas's diesel one. It's not going to be diesel for very long. Engine's coming out. Going in that black one that's outside. But yeah, now these were close to fitting before, but they didn't quite fit. Now, perfect. I'll show you if I can. I mean, as a comparison, this is that one is way too thick. Look at the difference. Both two and a half inch V bands. But look at that, they do not go together. So yeah, unfortunately, V-bands are a pain in the ass. This is the one that fitted 
from the factory, and it does. By eye, you honestly couldn't tell the difference, but these didn't fit, so I knew it wasn't much. And yeah, according to the calipers, it was like half a mil. So I took half a mil off, and uh, bang on. So, now you know. Next piece attached was the first 45 degree to the V-bands. These are tricky as fuck, because as I mentioned in the last video, I think, these are two inch, what they're called two inch nominal, which means they're not two inch internally or externally. It's a pain in the ass. They're slightly over two inch internally, slightly under two and a half inch externally. So they don't really fit anything that well. Um, these had two and a half inch V-bands on them. So I had to adapt, well, adapt or weld to um, two and a half inch V-bands to these, which are not quite two and a half. I did it straight to a bend, which kind of helps because it reduces the gap somewhat. And I mostly, I didn't really do it for that reason. I did it purely because I wanted the bend straight away to keep it as far away from the compressor as possible. But also it's tricky with a bend because I wanted the pipe to sit in the flange so the bend was as soon as possible. But because it's too big, I wanted it to be center and blah, blah, blah. So getting them both the same is, I wouldn't say impossible because I've done it, but it's a pain in the ass. Um, I didn't get them both the same as in dead flat, dead center, and the same but that didn't matter as such as long as they was at a, the right angle and the same sort of angle so when I build the link pipe it matches up without too much fucking work and I did thankfully the next job would be the link pipe which obviously goes to the wastegate on each of these and again this needs to be well ideally to save yourself extra work dead you know dead the same but opposite each other so i need to get things lined up correctly so they are dead on 90 degrees otherwise it becomes a pain in the ass again and uh go from there i'm gonna have to use some kind of turbo turbo hanger support brace something because this schedule 10 stuff yeah it's strong as fuck because it's so thick, but that makes it heavy as all hell as well. And I don't want all that weight hanging off the back of the manifolds. Two turbos, you know, between them, that's 20, 22 kilos, 24 kilos, something like that. They're about 10, 11 kilos each, probably a bit more with that extra metal I've added. Plus all this pipe work, which is heavy as fuck. So the turbos are gonna have to be hung supported braced from well ideally from the engine or the gearbox i haven't worked that bit out yet it would probably come at the same time as making that rear subframe bit because i don't know if you can see but there's two there's two bosses on top of the gearbox there which may be a good place to hang things from i don't know i'll figure that out but i don't want the weight of the turbos and everything just hanging off the manifold that's asking for trouble i want to sit on something or hang off the engine or sit off the gearbox i think it's gonna have to sit off the gearbox or depending how rigidly mounted they are to the car off the chassis because they're going to be too far back to be hanging off any of the engine really because the engine's all the way down there so yeah we will see all right that is the next piece done the join that will go to the gate and um, yeah i mean it's good working with these schedule 10 things because they're so thick and because of the chamfered end mixed with the thickness you can get real good penetration around everything once you come to weld it properly so it's bang on and the fact it comes in these preformed sections 
makes things a lot easier to make as well. You don't have to fanny about cutting stuff too much. There's no doubt gonna be bits where I gotta modify stuff to suit the angles, but the minimal amount of that I can do, the better. So, but yeah, this is where we are now. I mean, obviously, wastegate in the middle. Now that looks badass. Wastegate tees off each side and yeah it's got to be roughly here I can modify the angle of this if I remember right the Ferrari F4 has got it leaning back and then the pipe coming like that I can do it whichever way I want really I've got plenty of room I think probably like standing up straight you know like that might be uh, my best bet. I'm not sure yet. It's literally uh, mocked up with cable ties at the moment. But yeah, I've uh, spot welded that onto the flange for that. And I think that's ideal. I'm really confident that's more than enough flow for the wastegate now. Absolutely fine. Just these two straight pipes to join it there but I need to finalize exactly where this is all sitting before I do that realistically and then once that's finalized I guess I make the ones to the manifolds I think it's probably easier to do this first because once this is done they are it's just in place there's no there's no change in it and then you know you just got to do what you got to do to uh, link these up to the manifolds well, I'd say this is roughly where it's gonna go manifolds shouldn't be too hard it looks like maybe a 45 degree there 45 degree there and maybe another one there would uh, sort of make it about right probably some little extras but nothing much still not sure how I'm going to uh, mount the turbos because they really do need to be here sort of up at this point I'm going to clock the compressor housing because obviously that's no good being like that exactly which ways they face don't know but there's plenty of room either way so yeah it's uh looking badass but um i need to also check what the gear linkage layout is on this because this is the gear selector and obviously i need room for the linkage to work so i can't uh you know i can't do stuff that makes in the way of that because otherwise i screwed myself over but I need to uh, look at some pictures to work that out. But that's got to be worked out and checked before I uh, do any other bits, you know, any other welding. But yeah, we're roughly there. I mean, to be honest, say if I needed more clearance for this, I could just do a 45 up and then a 45 across instead of a dead straight bit. So the wastegate itself is raised up a little. In fact, that's probably a good idea. But again, I'll work that out in the next bit. Also, by the way, got a brand new GoPro because the last one was knackered. I filmed the last video with this one as well. This is a new one. It's another Hero 8 Black because I had all the spares from my others. So it just seemed pointless buying a 9 or a 10 and the parts wouldn't fit because I'd be starting from scratch. But it's a pain in the ass. It's constantly saying SD card error when there's nothing wrong with the SD card. And I've even tried different SD cards. It still does it every now and again, just goes SD card error. Sometimes it won't, won't even turn on, or if it does, it's just a black screen. It's like fucking hell. It's brand new. I mean, I haven't even took the, um, the clear plastic covers off the lenses or anything yet. I'm just, because, 
I'm waiting for it to break it the way it is. It's just, it's not working properly already. Well, it hasn't from the start, but yeah. This is going fucking nicely. Exhaust wise, you know, I've still got the F40 thing in my head. So a 90 off here, both of them facing in and then a 90 out, sort of, you know, normal height and then ending in the race cats. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to go. But yeah, good times.